Hello again, it's Liz, and today we're going to talk about baby butts. What is cuter than a baby's butt, except when it has a diaper rash, then it is one of the saddest things in the world. We're going to talk about what causes diaper rash, what you can do about it, and just general tips and things I think are helpful that I've picked up along the way. I've been a pink nurse for a while, and I have my own baby who's had diaper rash, so I hopefully can share a little bit of knowledge with you. Okay, so what is diaper rash? Diaper rash is incredibly common. It's just an irritation of the skin. It's a very common reason that a lot of people go to the pediatrician. So somewhere between like 15 and 20% of pediatrician visits are people coming in for their baby's diaper rash, which is a ton. The most common age kiddos usually get it is nine to 12 months, but you can get it anytime you're in a diaper, no matter what your age. So what are the causes of diaper rash? Basically, you can get diaper rash anytime there's something that is irritating your skin and your skin is a super, super finicky little lady. So she's going to be too mad if she's too wet, if she's too dry, there's something touching her that she doesn't want to be touching her. It's kind of like your little sister in the car. Everything can annoy her. So your skin likes to be in kind of a perfect balance of anything that messes with this is going to cause irritation on your skin, which will cause breakdown. So you can imagine in a diaper, diapers hold moisture, diapers hold poop and pee, and they kind of rub against your booty. So that's the perfect combination to give you breakdown on your butt and get a rash. The most common, I guess, thing that is going to be going on with diaper rash is you have too much moisture. Your baby's sitting in their diaper for too long. That does the first layer of abrasion against your skin. So anytime you have a diaper rash, your skin is getting abraded away, which is why it looks red and angry. The moisture sitting on there, if it messes with your skin, causing a little bit of breakdown. And then your baby poops and pees. And then that further gets in your skin and causes more breakdown. And then on top of that, it's already, your skin's already ticked off and your baby starts wiggling and scooting around. And then you get chafing. So the combination of those three things, it's mad because it's moist and then it gets dirty and then it gets rubbed. And that is the trifecta of terrible and why you get diaper rash. So once the skin is irritated by those three things, it can just kind of escalate and get worse, which is why it's super awesome to get ahead of the game. And as soon as you notice the diaper rash, start getting on top of it and try to do something about it. So if you think about your skin kind of like a house, if your house has really good roof, really good walls, and really good windows, nothing's going to get in. So that would be skin that's intact is kind of like your house and your windows that are intact. It's going to block what's inside. It's going to keep it safe, warm, and happy. But if your windows start breaking, your walls start breaking, your, leaf, your roof is leaking, you're going to start getting junk leaves, grain inside your house, and that's going to make your house fall apart pretty quickly. So that's kind of how I like to think of your skin is once you, the little cracks start. So once the moisture gets in there and starts abrading on your skin, everything can fall apart super quickly. So what are some things that can cause you to get diaper rash even more easily if you have diarrhea? So anytime you're introducing even more garbage into this poor little diaper, even more irritants, you're gonna get more diaper rash. The common cause of diarrhea is anytime they're sick, if they have a tummy bug, um, if they recently, I know my daughter usually gets a little bit of diarrhea if she's teething, um, or an antibiotic use. She had amoxicillin for an ear infection and that totally wiped out the good bacteria and the bad bacteria, which led to her tummy being upset and she had a ton of diarrhea. So if your baby is maybe taking antibiotics, just be super alert and on bum watch and make sure your baby's booty looks okay. All right, so what are you looking for when you're watching out in these initial stages for diaper rash? It's gonna be red. There's, like with a lot of skin conditions, it's gonna go, you're gonna have a range in your rash from mild to like, oh my goodness, this is really bad. So mild is a couple of red spots. They might even be like little dots that are sort of scattered all over the diaper area. Diaper rash, is usually contained to the diaper area. Um, if you start noticing it other places, that could be a maybe not a diaper rash, that might be a different type of rash. But so if you're noticing just some scattered red blotches on your baby's diaper area, it probably have a mild diaper infection or diaper rash. 
Moving up towards like more moderate, it's going to be like red all over the diaper area. So maybe the entire zone would be really kind of red, um, just irritated, mad looking, getting even worse. When it starts to get shiny, if any like blisters pop up, anything that looks like it has pus under it, any open spots where it looks like blood, you need to go to your pediatrician because that's a super high risk for getting infected. You might need other antibiotics and some other assistance just to make sure this doesn't get out of control. Okay, so now we know what causes diaper rash, where it's kind of going to be, what it's going to look like, what can you do about it? So going back to our house analogy where we have our house where everything's coming inside and it's falling apart, what do you want to do? You want to put a tarp over your house, fix your windows and rebuild your walls, but just cover it real quick with a tarp to kind of regroup inside, build things back up, give you that protective layer from the elements. That's what we want to do to your baby's booty is give them a protective layer from the elements. So the easiest way to do that is with a diaper cream. The best diaper creams for this are diaper creams with petroleum and zinc oxide. So examples of things that have petroleum and zinc oxide are going to be like desitin, A and D ointment. Um, my favorite is this Boudreaux's butt paste. Um, it's awesome. Some of these are a little bit hard to get off. So if you're having a hard time getting them off, just use a little baby oil. They're hard to get off because the whole point of them is it's creating a barrier between your baby's booty and the contents of the diaper. So that is the entire reason why you're putting it on there. It doesn't, it's going to heal itself by giving a protection from moisture. So it just needs a barrier. It needs something to keep it the moisture away while your body does its own job of healing that diaper area. You're going to apply that when you change their diaper. Make sure their bum is kind of dry before you put it on. Um, so that's really like the, on the over the counter what you can do to put it on that's not too much of a big deal. There's other things you can do that are super helpful in addition to the diaper cream. So one thing, the best thing is just let that baby air dry. So I try to give my daughter like at least a couple spans throughout the day where she can kind of just be naked, open and free for even 15 minutes. Just lay a towel on the ground just in case there's going to be some accidents and just let her be free. Um, air drying, that is going to be the best thing because really you're just trying to get moisture away from that skin. And if there's nothing sitting on that skin, that's pretty dry. Uh, using, avoiding your normal wipes and just going with like water. I usually try to just use a washcloth and a little bit of warm water and then I pat it off really well after. That way there's no perfumes, there's nothing chemical kind of adding to your skin breakdown that's already there. They sell um, like sensitive skin diapers, so that might be a good idea to go out and just get a little pack. Then those diapers usually have less fragrance, less chemical in it to sort of retain the urine so it has less of the absorbency, but it will be kinder to your baby's skin. Also change their diaper more frequently. Again, going in the lines of the more you change it, the less moisture it is sitting on them, the better. Okay, so how long? You've done all these things. You've put the cream on, you're air drying, you're using water to wash the baby off. What now? When should you see improvement? Your baby's diaper rash should be getting better as soon as you start doing all this stuff. If you're putting the cream on, letting them air dry, and it's getting worse, you might have something else going on. The diaper rash usually goes away totally in two to three days. So if you're sitting there and you're looking at it and it's just getting worse and worse and worse, you might be dealing with something else. Um, you could have a yeast rash that usually they recommend putting like over the counter. Um, I put my condizole cream on Avery, but I would call, call your pediatrician if you think you're dealing with a yeast rash because they're going to give you what they recommend. Um, and it's always best to have your pediatrician's approval before you put any medics in like that on your baby because they're a baby. Um, and they're fragile little people. So if it's getting worse, just and not getting better, it's not the direction normal diaper rash goes in. So you should really contact your pediatrician with that. When should you call your pediatrician? So things to look for with diaper rash was like we said with the yeast rash, if it's lasting like more than two or three days and it's really just looking uglier and uglier and it doesn't go away after you've done two to three days of this regimen, you need to call them because you might be dealing with something else. If your baby has a fever, if they have the diaper rash that's moving outside of their diaper area to their chest, their arms, their legs, it's 
probably not diaper rash and you should go to your pediatrician. If they have any blisters or sores, or if it's in your baby that's less than six weeks old, their skin at that point is just so fragile it can get out of control pretty quickly, never a bad idea to call. One thing that I absolutely love, since we're on the topic of butt creams, this, I just call it a butt spatula. It's actually called a baby bum brush. I'll link to it down below. It's wonderful. You just squirt the butt cream on there and you spatula it on your baby, kind of like an art project, uh, and then wipe it off, wash it off. Super easy, and then you don't get the cream like all over your hands and under your nails and all of that lovely stuff. I will also link below to my resources that I kind of looked at to get a few tidbits for this video down below in case you guys want to do some of your own research. The American Academy of Dermatology has some really good information and a video that was super helpful. Hopefully this answered some of your guys' questions about diaper rash, how to deal with it, so that when it happens to your baby, you're not sitting there being like, oh my goodness. So yeah, if you have any other questions about diaper rash, just let me know. I've dealt with lots and lots and lots of diaper rash with all the babies in the hospital. So thanks for watching. Have a good one.